Welcome to the Inferno cast. Today's guest is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, but he's also a movie and television actor. He has been training since probably 1996 and is a pretty well known personality, Mr. Scott Kahn. How you doing today, Scott? I'm good, man. Thanks for talk talking to me. Hey, I'm just, I'm glad you took time to talk to us. Um, I really wanted to get into kind of where martial arts started for you as a kid and but first, I wanted to kind of ask, like, some of your martial arts influences as a kid. Like, so were you always in athletics and sports and kind of looking to martial arts as a, as a kid when you were younger? Or was that something that maybe came later in life? Um, not so much martial arts, boxing. My dad was a big uh, boxer when he was a kid. And so I, I kind of grew up knowing how to hit the heavy bag and the speed bag. And I was an athlete. I played sort of more traditional sports when I was a lot younger. Um, but, um, yeah, I was always into exercise. I was always into boxing. I, you know, box since probably since I was 11 or 12 years old. And then my sports athletic career sort of turned to like skateboarding and surfing. Yeah. Um, and I kind of left normal sports and kind of st stuck with skateboarding and surfing for, for, you know, from then on for, for the rest of my life. And um, martial arts was never, I mean, my dad was super into martial arts, but I never really, it, done, it didn't really interest me that much. I wrestled. Um, oh, really? Uh-huh. I wrestled in oh, junior high school, not in high school. Um, but um, I always liked to fight, but martial arts, karate never, um, right. it never well, so did it for me. And that's where, like, you know, I put kind of all those things into the martial arts category, you know, as far as wrestling and boxing and, you know, jiu-jitsu. Okay, yeah. So I was always, I always like to, you know, scrap. For sure, but, you know, because it's, uh, and I think that that's a problem sometimes people run into is, like, they see martial arts pretty narrow, like, hey, did you do karate? You know, and, uh, I actually, but it's actually really now fun. I'm actually tripping. I actually did. When I was 16 years old, I did take a Taekwondo class. Oh, and this was after you boxed and wrestled, right? Yeah, after I boxed and wrestled, I took a Taekwondo class. Me and my buddy Ross, this, he was just this lunatic dude. He was like one of the scrappiest dudes I knew. We took one Taekwondo class, and then we went to the second class, and we got all the pads and went yeah. back to my house and just straight, like, went full on kicking, punching, yeah. trying to kill each other. And then – um I think that lasted for like a couple of weeks. And after like a couple of headaches, we realized that this it was a wasn't. bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. It was Questions are real. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever, yeah. uh, did you ever compete in boxing? Um, not, not really. No, I never, I mean, I did some smokers and stuff like that, but never, never. Um, you know, I, I think I have a I have a funny story about boxing, but it happened kind of later in life, so I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to hear it. But um, yeah, I mean, if we're trying to keep on track as far as like, no man, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah, tell us about your boxing story. Yeah, so I used, I, I boxed a, a, a bunch, and I was I was really into it, and I would spar a lot, and I would um, uh, um, I was going to Freddie Roach's gym, Wild Card. I don't know if you ever heard of Wild oh, Card yeah. Boxing Gym. I've known Absolutely. Freddie since I was 16, 17 years old. So I, I was going to the wild card gym when it opened. And I think it opened in like 90, 98. Before that, it was the Outlaw Boxing Club. Anyway, um, I, really, I really was into it. And I would, I would spar. And I would spar with a lot of good pros. And I was, you know, I was, I was about it. I was, I was really into, into it. Um, and then Jackie Callen, who was a, a, a promoter, who she um, – she was um, James Tony's promoter. Remember James okay. Tony? Yeah, yeah, I know James. Yeah. Um, anyway, she saw me sparring with this kid one day, and she said, "Hey, would you ever, can, would you fight? Would you do a pro fight?" And I said, "Yeah, man, I'd love to do a pro fight. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like that would really um, be awesome. Justify, you know, make me not just like a punk actor kid, and make me actually like a, a, a tough guy in everybody's eyes. You know, so I was yeah, like, all yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I'll do it." And with the, the day that I committed to do it, um, there was this card she was going to put me on. And it was like 35 days away. I, I know because it was like, it was before my birthday. It was before my, like, I think it was my 25th birthday. Mm -hmm. And the anxiety that I had that first night was so heavy. I didn't sleep. And I'm talking, this is like the day I agreed to do it. 
Yeah. And then I didn't, I didn't sleep. I had crazy anxiety. The next night I, I couldn't sleep again. And I called her two days later and I said, this just, it's just clearly not for me. And it was the first day I realized that people that actually fight for a living are a special kind of people, man. I mean, it, it's like, there's a, there's a, I mean, I've, I've competed small things. Like I said, some smokers, some jujitsu tournaments back in the day when I was, you know, in my early twenties, but the idea of fighting in front of a lot of people on like a real card, you gotta be a, you gotta be a special kind of person upstairs. I mean, I, I feel right. like, you know, I'm, I'm like a, uh, I'm dedicated to whatever I do. And I, I, you know, I put everything towards it, but that's the, anyway, I, I gained more respect and appreciation for people that fight for a living, man. Cause you got That's you, It's so specific. funny you say that because, um, so anyway, I, I didn't do, I did not do the pro fight. So, so you were like, you see, you were the smart one. Cause you're like, I'm not going to get my brain damaged so I can go prove how tough I am, you know, but, um, it is. Yeah. New. Yeah. But it, I, I, but honestly, man, and I'm not just talking shit. Like I, is there cursing allowed on this? Sorry. Yeah. You're all good, man. You're all good. I, I, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just trying to act tough. Like I could, I could box pretty good. You know, I, I, you know, I, I actually felt like, and I knew that she was going to put me with some like tomato can for sure. She wanted me to fight, you know, have a bunch of fights. She, she did it for Mickey Rourke back in the eighties. So yeah. I think she saw me as like, Oh, this dude could do what Mickey Rourke did and actually have a boxing career and this, that, and the other. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I think she definitely would have put someone in there that I could have, could have beat. Yeah. So it wasn't that I was afraid of losing. It wasn't that I was afraid of getting beat up something about, I can't explain it, man, but I just had the, 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 the anxiety was, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't uh, figure out a way to get some sleep and get, figure out a way to, to deal with it. And anyway, you know, when you look I at, I don't know uh, if it was fear or what it was, but anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, like in the fight game, like, so, and that brings up an interesting topic. That's like, when you look at the psychology of performance, especially in the combat sports, there's usually a few factors, you know, that weigh on people. You know, one is like their, their fear of success. It's like, if I go out and I do well, what are the expectations that will be put on me? You know, like I have to win every fight. I'm going to have to be the champion. I'll have to be the best. You know, and the second one is, you know, the fear of failure of like, well, what if I make a mistake? You know, what yeah. if I get embarrassed? You know, embarrassed. What that's it too. Yeah. You know, like, cause you know what you're, you know what you're capable of, you know what your potential is. And then the third factor that usually multiplies it that, you know, causes the no sleep, you know, things is usually because it's important to you. Like it yeah. matters. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it, uh, you know, and it's not that the winning matters so much. It's just like boxing matters, you know, yeah. MMA matters to some people, jiu-jitsu matters. And the more that it matters, it usually magnifies the thousand times they tell themselves of this could happen, that could happen. And like they die a thousand deaths. You know? Yeah, man. It's like, um, it's, it's like that was, I feel like street fighting too. Like I've been in some fights in my life and it's, it's funny how once you start fighting, there is none of that. Like there is no fear. There is no exactly. worried about getting hurt. None of that. You see red and you're like, I'm in this, but leading up to that, it's, it's about like people are watching. What if I get embarrassed? What if, you know, what if that girl I like sees me lose this fight? Or what if there's a rumor that I got beat? Up? Like, it's that stuff. Yeah. It's not the actual fighting. Shit, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In the moment. About, you know, what, what's going to happen? Problem. You get cut? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. In the moment, it's never the problem. It's always yeah. the But that's what I really wanted to talk to you about because, like, because, you know, one, you're a high achiever. You've been very successful in your career you know, and, and like, and you've worked diligently on it. And, and that was one of the things I wanted to ask you is the amount of diligence you put in to having to have your job consistently cannot be easy. It can't be like a phone in like, yeah, man, I guess we'll go do this movie today or this film today. Like, like it has to be hard work. So my question is that level of excellence that it takes to perform within your profession. How do you feel like that is congruent with that of like doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or doing boxing, you know, or, or that type of training. Do you feel like one helped the other or if they're integrated? Um, I, I, I think that they're integrated in the sense that, you know, nothing, and this is such a cliche, but I, I don't, I don't think that anything in 
uh, in life that is um, worth a shit is easy, right? Yeah. Um, it's really hard to get a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a real legitimate black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You're going to get hurt. You're going to want to quit. You're going to get beat up. You're going to be embarrassed. You're going to get frustrated. Um, but if you, if, if you quit or you, or you don't stick with it, then you're, it, it's just sort of like you're, you're, you're not, you know, it's like a good metaphor for life. It's like you're not, you're not approaching life the right way. And it's the same thing with anything that you do, whether it be acting, boxing, jujitsu, learning how to cook, being anything that you're passionate about, you better work harder than everybody else. And you better work to the point where you feel like, you know, it's like if you try to teach a five-year-old kid, you're like, do push-ups. They do one push-up and they're like, this sucks. And you're like, keep going. They don't quite get that yet. They're like, it hurts. Why would I keep going? But as you get older, you learn. I'm saying this because I have a five-year-old kid who I'm trying to teach how to do push-ups. So it's like, <laughs> um, as you get older, you either become the kind of person that wants to, um, when it's all over, be the person that's like, I, I kind of am a little crippled. I kind of can't walk as good as everybody else, but I did these things. Or you want to be the person that's like, yeah, I feel fine, and I never accomplished shit. You know, I was safe. I played it all safe, and I'm okay, and everything's great. I, I'd rather be the dude that's like jammed up and hurt and, you know, whatever else, or tired or, you know, overworked or whatever, and accomplished a bunch of shit. And to me in life, like I said, whether it's acting, jujitsu, or whatever, if you don't put in maximum effort, you don't get out of it, uh, uh, you know, you don't get out of it, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the peak of what there is to get out of it. Um, and where I know, do you feel? Where and do I, think, you feel I, I know that's like, uh, I know I sound a little scattered, but the point is, is like anything difficult, um, anything, anything worth holding on to, is going to be difficult and it is going to be hard and it, you do have to work harder than everybody else and you do have to um really dig in and nothing 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 is more um nothing is a better example of that than jujitsu you know and i think that's why so many people uh talk about jujitsu as a metaphor for life because life is a life will beat you up man but you gotta keep going and keep keep, keep going and keep keep going and the people that keep going are the people that are successful and they're the people that um you know the people other people look up to and people go oh shit i want what that dude got like there's nobody out there that you look up to that didn't struggle to get to where they are and whatever they're doing you know what i mean absolutely and so you're talking about this perseverance relentless attitude you know where did that come from in your life i mean are we talking about life? Are we talking about fighting? What are we talking well, about? Well, I mean, like for you personally, like, I mean, the way that you're talking, man, just like your body language and the way you just explained that and broke that down, like that is, that is a unique attribute that not everybody in the world has. Everybody can be capable of. Right. But for you to have that relentless, like, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to work harder than everybody. I'm never going to give up. I will take the beatings. Where do you feel like that influence to, to attack life that way kind of came from for you? I mean, a hundred percent, it comes from my father, a hundred percent. My father, um, always, always, uh, and in, in good ways and bad ways, two things. One, my father was a tough dude. He was a tough, tough, tough dude. He came from, you know, he was born in the Bronx, grew up in Queens. All I heard growing up were stories about fighting and this guy, you know, tough guys, this tough guy, that tough guys. And me growing up in California, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, I had a chip on my shoulder because my father would basically tease me like, you'll never be as tough as we were. There's no chance. Like you grew up with money. You grew up in the streets of Hollywood. I came from Queens, man. Like we had to fight. You know what I mean? So that got me crazy. That, 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 that I wanted to hang. I wanted to go pick fights with the tougher, toughest dudes I could find to prove to my old man that I'm, a, I'm, 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 I got your blood, man. I'm just as tough as you, you know? Yeah. So a lot of it, and I think that's that's a little negative, the negative version, because, you know, trying to prove something isn't the best way to go about it. 
but that's what really drove me to be scrappy. And then as far as drive in life, the healthy thing is my father always taught me, if you're going to do something, be the best or, or don't do the shit. And that's, you know, that's like an old school kind of thing. I don't think people teach kids that anymore. But when I was a kid, if I was going to play sports, like you better try and be the best. Or if you're going to be an actor, you better try and be the best. You're going to be a writer. You better try and be the best. You know, you're going to be a carpenter. You better build the best shit. You know, that, that was his. So the, the combination of, you know, where he come from, where he came from and me trying to prove that I was just as tough as him combined with what he taught me on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I just always looked up to people that were successful and people that were successful seemed to have one thing in common. They tried harder than everybody else. Natural talent is one thing, right? But if you got a bunch of natural talent, it's actually a curse. If you're so naturally talented, you don't have to work as hard as everybody else. And, you know, I'm watching this documentary last night about Michael Jordan and he probably could have been the best in the world without practicing. But because he practiced harder than everybody else, he's the best of all time. No one can touch him. You know what I mean? And it's the, same thing like, it's the same thing like Derek Jeter. You know what I mean? Like he was the first dude to practice every day. He was the last dude to practice every day. Talent, natural talent, he had it over anybody. But on top of it, he also worked as hard as everybody. I mean, it's like, like, how do you be successful? It's luck meets hard work meets talent at the same time, right? And, you know, I think Mayweather says that, right? That was Mayweather's thing. Hard work meets talent and whatever. But um, you got to um, – anyway, that, that, that's, that's been instilled in me since I was a kid. And I um, uh, anything I do, if I'm going to do it, I, I want to at least try to be the best at it. And um, Well, I mean, and that's like – and it makes sense because it's almost like a continuum because – you know, your, your dad was able to motivate you with, you know, a little bit of a challenge and a little bit of a push, which, you know, for like a lot of, uh, you know, masculine energies and guys, like, you know, we respond to that. But then, you know, that motivation turned into drive whenever you internalize it of like, this is who I want to be. This is the effort I want to put forth, you know, like you transitioning that, um, you know, into that inevitable push for success you know because that's like same thing you said about natural talent I, I get a lot of guys in the gym sometimes that they, they played other sports you know college football or pro ball something like that and they are my most concerning athletes because they worked really hard in another area and now they're in a new area so when they come in and they start doing jujitsu martial arts it's kind of easy for a minute because they don't have expectation of success. You know, they come in, it's cool. They get choked out by the little guy, you know, but they're able to thrash around and do well against the other new guys. But the minute that it starts getting hard and difficult, like that's the ultimate character test to where it's like, are you disciplined to live through the failures? Cause it's easy when you're successful, you know, and, right. and part of being like the new white belt, your success is failing. Like, oh man, I got choked, I got swept, and that's your expectation, so you're successful, so it doesn't mess with you. But you put like six months, 12 months down the road, your definition of success starts changing. And then right. you start getting frustrated because it's like, I should have tapped that guy, I should have got that sweep. So that goes to my next question is, did your definition of success when you were younger, finding boxing and jujitsu, the definition for success then is it the same as your definition for success now? No, not, not with jujitsu, right? Okay. I mean, now my goal with jujitsu is to do it for the rest of my life and to be well, smart. Yeah. You know, I've been, you know, I was talking to somebody, they're like a buddy of mine's a purple belt and he called me. He's like, well, we're not training. How, this, I'm, I'm going crazy. What are we going to do? And I'm like, man, I've, I've been out for nine months from injuries. Like I can do two, three months with no jujitsu standing on my head. Like, I'm practicing jujitsu in my head every day anyway. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so as far as taking time off because of what we're going through right now, um, you know, I, I, I can deal with that. My goal now with jujitsu is to not get injured anymore, roll with people that I, you know, respect and be relaxed, not be, you know, when I was younger, this, I'm going to go all over the place because that's how I do but. When I was younger, we tried to, I was trying to kill everybody and everybody was trying to kill me. And that's how that, you know, I know it's still like that in a lot of gyms, but in 1996, when you did jujitsu, it was like, you're going to fight. You know what I mean? I also, the school that I came from, there was no flow roll. 
There was no take it easy. There was no, he's an actor. There was like, yo, you're, tr this is jujitsu. Like you come here to fight, 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 fight. That that's it. Now I'm, it's, it's not like that for me anymore. I want to, I want to teach. I want to, I want to learn. I want to do it till I'm 90. I don't want to be, I mean, I know I earlier said like, I'm okay with being crippled, but to an extent, I want to be able to keep training. You know, that to me now, my, to win in jujitsu for me now is to be able to do it, like I said, till I'm, um, you know, so I'm Elio Gracie, you know what I mean? Till I'm his yeah. age and how he Absolutely. was training, you know? But again, so the difference is, is that when I was younger, there was a lot of ego. There was a lot of, you know, let's, I want to be the toughest kid on the block. I want to be able to choke everybody out. Now, I just want to be able to, survive and not have to go back under the knife and have my knees cut on or my bicep cut on or my neck re-injured you know i've got i've got a lot a lot of injuries over the years and it took me that's another humbling thing about jujitsu like i don't care how athletic you are i don't care how tough you are when you come into this thing if you don't figure out how to adjust your mindset you will jujitsu will beat you or you will go i i i, I can't do this anymore and that's, you know, a lot of people quit because of that too. But for me, I've learned over the last 20 years, I've been training for 20 years, over 20 years, I've learned how to protect my body, how to protect my, you know, how to protect my injuries, how to deal with a spastic 220 pound blue belt. And sometimes that means, no, thank you, bro. I ain't roll. I don't need to roll with you because I don't have anything to prove. 10 years ago, I had something to prove to that 220 pound blue belt. And nine times out of 10, I prove it. But that one time out of 10, I go home with a limp and I got to go see the orthopedic and be like, yo, did I tear something? I don't want to do that shit anymore. The anxiety from that, I, I don't need. So anyway, to answer your question, no, it's changed a lot over the years. Yeah. Well, how did you, so how did you find BJJ? You know, cause you, you're boxing, you're playing sports, you, your career starting to take off. Um, you know, how did, how did this happen? So again, we, I was, you know, I was a scrappy kid. I like to kind of stick my chin out, my chest out and walk around like I was a tough kid, even though, I, you know, now looking back, I was not, but I thought I was, you know. Um, and um, around the exact same time, Carlson Gracie opened up a school in L.A. Um, and he was training Vitor Belfort. And at the exact same time, Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu opened up in about – I don't know, like a two mile space in between. And a buddy of mine, Gator, was a security guard at work at nightclubs. And um, he always, you know, would be breaking up fights, you know, and he one time invited me. He's like, yeah, they just opened up a, a, a mixed martial arts school. And I had seen, um, uh, I had seen um, the UFC one and two at that point. What was that? What year was that? Was that 94? 93. 93, uh, 93 was when the first one was. Yeah. Yeah. So I had seen that. And I remember, I remember the, that first one, a bunch of us, there was like 20 of us like got together. I don't even remember if it was like on video on demand or, you know, the box or whatever, however. There we was could, no video on demand back then, man. Whatever, whatever yeah. it was. What, it what, what was VHS. The, no, 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 no. It wasn't VHS. It was live. Oh, oh no. It was live. UFC oh, one was a live event that you could pay for. Somehow. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, in 93. So you in watched it. I you watched it live. I watched okay. the very first one live with a group of friends. I, I, obviously, it wasn't video on demand, but it was some, whatever the version of video on demand. That's why I said the box. You remember the box? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now it that makes the, sense. Yeah. Whatever it was, whatever it was, I had seen it, and I remember thinking, like, you know, this dude's a bad motherfucker you know like yeah. always great like wow you know I, I definitely remember being interested at the time but there were really no there wasn't any internet there wasn't a way to find out about that thing I'm talking uh, to my friend Gator I had already been up on that I was actually going back saying like I do remember that first event and I do remember watching it live and I do remember being you know blown away by it and thinking you know this is this is this is this is something for me but also there was no way to find it there was no school i think the only school at the time was in torrance and at right. the time torrance to me might as well have been italy like you know what i mean um so the time I, um, distance equation yeah yeah i mean like how do you get to Tor you know when you're 16 17 years old where's where's torrance like right. <laughs> yeah. um 
so anyway, when he, when Gator told me about this school that was opening up Beverly Hills Jiu Jitsu, he said, you should come with me. And I said, all right, bet, let's go. And around the exact same time, Vitor was training at Gold's Gym in Venice with my old man. And my old man oh, okay. told Vitor about me, and then Vitor invited me to go to Carlson. So around the exact same time, I went to Carlson School, and I also went to Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu. Now, at the time, Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu didn't even have a real Jiu-Jitsu instructor. Um, at the time, we had Boss Rutten would teach a class at 9 in the morning. Mark Kerr would teach a class at 11. Um, Marcos Hujas would teach a class at 3. And then there'd be like an open jujitsu class at six. So it was like pretty much the first real MMA school. Oh, and Oleg Taktarov would teach a class on oh, Tuesdays man. and Thursdays. That's awesome. Like it was, it was pretty insane. Um, and at the time we didn't really, these dudes were just kind of coming up, but this was like the, the only MMA school in, in, in LA. Um, so I ended up doing a couple classes over at Carlson, a couple of classes here. Carlson school kind of faded away pretty quickly. So I ended up at Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu. And at the time, there was a guy named Ethan. Um, what's his last name? Who's, a, um, who's, the, um, who's the guy who directed Big Wednesday? Oh, man, that is not, uh, <laughs> that's not my expertise. Anyway, this kid, Ethan, who, who was who's married or was dating... Horian's sister, uh, Horian's daughter. Okay. He was a purple belt from Torrance, and he would teach the jujitsu class at Beverly Hills Jujitsu. So there was okay. no, there was no, um, there was no black belt teaching jujitsu. Marcos Huas was teaching ballet too, though. So I'm, I'm sure he was a Brazilian jujitsu black belt, but he didn't, he didn't focus on any kind of gi training. Right. So the only jujitsu at the time. Um, at Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu was by this purple belt. And we'd show up, there'd be like 10 of us. None of us had gis. You couldn't get a gi, by the way. Like back in 96, trying to get yeah, a gi. Yeah, you would have to wear like a karate gi, like if you were gonna wear yeah. anything. Yeah, 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 or a judo gi, right? Yeah. And, um, and back then, I remember when someone finally came in and said, hey, we can order some gis now. Um, we all put on our orders. We waited like four months to get our first gis. And I still have my first gi, it was a Torah gi. Oh man, that's uh, you remember awesome. the Torangi? Yeah, that's old school, man. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, this dude Ethan would teach us, but really what he would do is he would show a couple of moves, he would show a triangle, he would show, you know, just the basic premise of this is your guard, don't let this guy pass your guard, here's a guard pass, and fight. So we yeah. just, for months and months and months, it was just like a free-for-all. And Ethan would beat everybody up, and he wouldn't use his hands. And he wasn't a big, strong dude. He had, like, hoises build pretty much. Yeah. And I'm talking about dudes that were, like, genuine, tough, 200 pounds dudes. And Ethan would just lay on his back and, and tap dudes without using his hands. So right. immediately, I was like, whatever this is, you know, I'm into this. And then um about six months in you stop me if this gets boring because i no no man this is awesome no dude you got me hooked like this is awesome okay. all right so then um about i don't know a few months in this guy named fabiano Iha, mm -hmm. um he came to the academy to start teaching the jujitsu class so we were all taking different mma courses with different dudes like i said mark kerr was teaching wrestling marco zuas was teaching valley Tudo. boss rutin was teaching like his pancreas style like we were, you know, just kind of obsessed with this place. And, um, and then when Fabiano Iha came, then the jujitsu got a little more serious. And, um, and, uh, and then that's where I, you know, that's when the, um, the, the geese showed up and that's when we kind of, you know, I mean, Ethan was a great instructor, but he was more of just like having fun with us. And so, so it was Fabiano more Iha like came. So it was almost more like it started out as like the Valley Tudo kind of thing when everybody was kind of, you know, starting with it. Uh, yeah. 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 But the, the, but, but out of everything, the jujitsu class is really what, what drew me in. Um, because, you know, in the, in the Valley Tudo class, it was more about, you know, it, you couldn't really spar. You couldn't fight. And you couldn't right. really fight in Boss's class because his, his, uh, the, his style was based a lot on striking and kicking. And same with Bali too, though. And uh, even, like Oleg Tantarov's class was a lot of, you know, s striking techniques and how to do this and how to do that. Jiu-Jitsu was the only class that we actually went to. 
And the truth of the matter is, is there was no order to it. It was, you just show up and fight. So we'd yeah. sit there, talk about some technique for 10, 15 minutes, and then we'd start scrapping. And we'd scrap for like an hour or stay late and scrap for two hours. And right. we were actually fighting. And then when Fabiano Iha came, it was the same vibe. I mean, I remember the day I tested for my blue belt with Fabiano Iha about, you know, six months after he was there. I had been training with Ethan for about four and then another six with him. There was a lineup of 20 dudes on the wall and me and Gator were getting our blue belts on the same day. And we fought every single person in the class without a rest. Stand, starting standing and they just it was like you know you i don't think you know nowadays that's not no really but that was so good. common that was so common in those days man uh because like you know i've had several friends like when they got their black belts in brazil like it was valley tudo that basically you went out and you did an mma fight with everybody in the class yeah and, and you know and they did not hold back um, yeah so anyway i um i got my blue belt from fabiano Iha. Um, and I, I'll remember too that day there was like a couple other dudes testing for stripes or whatever. I don't, you know, it's a long time ago, but I remember like they didn't do well and they didn't get their stripes. They didn't get whatever belts they were going for. You know what I oh, mean? Like, man. you know, it was, it was, you had to really prove it and there was no going soft. There was no, you know, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're trying really hard. Here's your belt. And, um, and then <clears throat> I'll never forget, um, I asked either Fabiano or one of his friends, I was like, yo, how, how many years do you think we'll have to put in to become a black belt? And I don't remember who said it specifically, but it was Brazil, a Brazilian dude. And he said, you'll never get a black belt. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, no, no Americans are ever going to get, you, you, there won't be an, you, you have to be Brazilian to get a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I was kind of like, all right, cool. I guess Howder, and um, Lewis and a couple guys like that got their black belts pretty soon after that. But for whatever reason, I believed that I would never get a black belt and that it wasn't, you know, I mean, I, it took me a year to get my blue belt and I got, I was training five days a week, sparring two hours a day. I mean, it was like, just getting that was, you know, was crazy. Hey, and, at the, and at the time I had already gotten so I'll jump forward. So Marcus Vinicius comes from, from, from Brazil, and he's a judo black belt. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. And the guy that owned Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu hired him now. Fabiano Iha left, and they brought Marcus in to, to run the jiu-jitsu program at Be Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu. And I think this was like early 97. And the first class I went to, I, had had, I got my blue belt, and I was like ready for the new instructor. And the dude showed up, and he was like, everybody line up. Everybody bow, everybody stretch, everybody do judo, uh, um, uh, you know, warm ups. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And like, if you look down, he's like, where are you? Look at me, look at like, show some respect. I was like, wait a minute, what happened that we just fight? You know, and I, I told him, I was like, yo, this class used to be like, he goes, that's not how this class is anymore. I'm in town and this is the new thing. And I was like, fuck this. I was like, I'm out. Not only am I never gonna get a black belt, Number one. Number two, I'm a blue belt. I will never lose a street fight ever again in my right. life. <laughs> yeah, never. you're the champ. I've already, I already got what I needed. Like, no, you, as a blue belt in 1996, you could go pick a fight with a karate black belt and smoke that dude. All you Absolutely. gotta do is put your head in his chest and get him to the ground and it's a wrap. So blue I belt already was the black belt of the 90s. Straight up, man. I mean, we were that confident. And trust me, we were going out. Like, we thought our chests were puffed out before. Now we were going out like, I dare somebody to to, to want to go to sleep tonight. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to te slap you in the back of the head while I take your back, while everybody's watching. You know, you're talking about that embarrassment, that fear of embarrassment. Yeah, That's yeah. gone. Like, that was all I'm going to do is make somebody look stupid. You know what I mean? Unless you hit yeah. me when I'm not looking, you are yeah. losing this fight. You yeah. know? So anyway, again, like, that was the mentality at the time. And... That was, I, I look back at it and obviously it was wrong. You know, it's not what, what jujitsu means to me today or even close. But at the time, here's this instructor who's telling me to bow and show respect after I've just been scrapping for a year straight. He's trying to get me to do judo, which I don't want to do. And he's like, you know, this is like a real class now. And, you know, like I said, and I can't get a black, but fuck this, I'm out. So I bailed. And I didn't, um, 
I didn't train from, I would say, 98 to about 2000, or no, 99 till about 2003 or four. I had played around with jujitsu. I would always wrestle with my friends. I would teach people. I would go on movie sets and like, you know, get my friends into jujitsu. I still stayed active with what I knew, but as far as sticking with jujitsu, how I was sticking with it before then, this guy, Marcus Vinicius, really turned me off. And um, he was way too serious. And he was, you know, I just wanted to fight. And he had all this, you know, points. And now there's points. And, like, you got to th- hold that position for points. I'm like, I just want to, you know, anyway. So I took about, I would say, like, four or five years off. Um, and then a funny, funny story. Do you want to cut me off or can I finish this funny No, story? no, no, no. Finish, man. This is good. So then I ended up going to Brazil in 2004 just on a trip with my friends. And um, I ran into a buddy, um, a friend of a friend's that I had met at Carlson's back in 96, a guy named Valid. You know Valid? Oh, Valid oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, took me a second, yeah. Well, I called him because I knew him from back when I trained at Carlson a couple times. Um, and uh, he said, uh, uh, when you come to Brazil, let me know. I'll pick you up and I'll take you to the Nogueira's gym and we'll train. I was like, all right, cool, you know. And um, so he, in Brazil, I hooked up with him. I went over to Nogueira's gym, and he said, you want to you wanna train a little bit? I said, yeah, let's train. I mean, I haven't really been training the last couple of years, but I can train. So we rolled for like an hour and a half. And he said, yo, man, you, you're talented at jiu-jitsu. You can't stop. You've got to get back into jiu-jitsu. And I said, yeah, I would like to, but the school that I was at back in the day, it just kind of got too serious for me. He goes, I got the guy for you. I got the best guy for you. When you go back to LA, I'm going to hook you up with him. This is the guy you need to be with. He's the best jujitsu instructor. I'm telling you, and I let you know, blah, 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 you got to meet him. Sends me to this place, and it's Marcus Vinicius. <laughs> That's so awesome. So Everything like, you need is this guy. Yeah. And then, and then obviously, you know, over that time, you know, things have changed and, you know, Marcus has been my sensei for now for since 2000, well, since 90s eight also but since 2004 and i stuck with him and i never left after that after that point and got my purple brown and black all from marcus Vinicius. well you know sometimes you know like that maturity sometimes the maturity is you know a little bit delayed within like the art the style not always just age sometimes it's just like experience of of training and being in the circles and you come around stuff like that it's always awesome that's so cool yeah but yeah it was a trip man too like and, it, and I know it sounds like a movie because, like, he never said the dude's name. He just said a buddy of mine teaches, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I didn't know it was Marcus until I showed up because also the school had moved. So oh, okay. Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu wasn't where it was anymore. It had moved down the block. So I kind of just showed up, walked in, and he goes, <laughs> oh, you, huh? And oh, I was like, no. I'm, I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm here to learn. And then, you know, my attitude had changed and everything yeah. pretty much – you know, well, I mean, and just I'm sure that just the learning from that kind of perspective was a lot different than your first experience getting your blue belt. Like, you know, your progression was probably a little bit more technical or structured and like made more logical sense because, you know, I mean, because I came up kind of in the same era where it was like, yeah, man, we're going to get together and beat each other up a whole bunch. And that's going to make up. us, good, you know, and, and then but whenever I found like a coach that was structured and it was like no this is how you actually do the technique like you know here's how you drill here's how you yeah do yeah, no. yeah for sure for sure and you know by the way like that school hasn't changed like you go to beverly hills jiu-jitsu you better go you're gonna go for, it's a fight i yeah. don't care if you're you know if you're a, a girl a famous actor or a guy who's getting ready for his first worlds or pans like it's it's still marcus has never changed in that way there is no flow rolling like i'll go sometimes you know, I'll be away for, you know, on a movie or at work and I come home and I haven't seen Marcus in a month. And, I've, you know, I've been rolling with other people, training with other people. And I come home and I'm kind of flowing with a couple of the younger guys. And he's like, what are you doing? This isn't jujitsu fight. This isn't jujitsu fight. You know, so it's like, yeah. he never, he never changed, you know, which is beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. Because like, those are the kind of influences and, and, and mentors in your life that, um, you know, that they just really make an impact on you. This starts bleeding out in other areas of your life. You know, it just, it kind of starts influencing you off the mats. Um, but it's funny that you say that about, you know, you, you ran into that guy and just kind of by chance ended up in front of him. Cause 
I kind of have that funny story about how I found out you did jujitsu because it was uh, that movie you did with, with Paul Walker, that Into the Blue, you know, with the yeah. beach and the treasure and all that. And there was that scene where, like, you guys kind of scuffled in the airport. And mm. it's funny because my wife was with me whenever we watched this. Um, and it was on DVD. It wasn't in theater. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, so if, when you you watch went, it, if you went and paid money to see that movie in the theater, you're a sucker. So I'm glad you didn't <laughs> do that. So we're watching this thing. And as soon as you guys started scuffling, man, like, like you made this specific grip. And just like the way it moved. And I remember immediately, like, I grabbed the remote and I paused it. And I was like, did you see that? You know, of course, she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, no, there's something up here. So I jumped on Google, you know, and I was like, man, this, this guy's got to be doing jujitsu. And that's how I found out you were into jujitsu um, was just the subtlety of like that scene, you know, which, of course, they let Paul get in full mount. And I was like, come on, man, this guy's the high rank. He's, <laughs> you know, he, he, Paul's the hero, man. I'm the goofy best friend who gets beat up. That's always yeah. tough, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Fun, funny story, just to give Paul a little bit of credit. Um, we were doing a different movie, Varsity Blues, in 99. And I had already had my blue belt. And I went out to Texas to do this movie. And Paul, let, let me just clear something up. Paul, you know, Paul passed away. Um, yeah. And he was a great dude. And I miss the dude. And I love him a lot. But um, he was a pretty boy. But Paul was a tough kid, man. Like, you don't, you know, you, you get real confused looking at Paul because he just looks like a sweetheart. But the dude was a scrapper. And I, I met him in 99. He had wrestled in high school. or um, I think he had boxed also. And so um, he, he'd known about jujitsu. And he said, oh, you do jujitsu? I said, yeah, I'm a blue belt in jujitsu. And he's like, Let, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. Choked him out. Yeah. He's like, again, arm bar. Again, choked him out. Choked this dude was red in the face. He was so frustrated. He's like, there is no actor out there that could literally this whole three month period. He, I tortured him. Like I literally would re wrestle with him every day. And you know, when you know jujitsu and someone doesn't know jujitsu, how it's so easy, you know what I mean? And he was a tough yeah. kid. He was strong, but like, I just knew shit that he didn't know. Anyway, long story short, uh, we finished that movie six months later. I get a phone call from him. I'm like, what's up? He's like, I just broke somebody's arm. <laughs> what? He's like, I got into a fight at a bar and I broke this dude's arm and they took the hospital. They took him away, blah, 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 blah. And anyway, long story short, he started training jujitsu. And by the time he passed, he was awarded his black belt, but he was a brown belt when he passed. And dude yeah. was a, 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 a tough dude. But the, that was like the, 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 the beauty of jujitsu, man, was. Yeah. You know, just, well, and it, I almost and he, feel like. I was just going to say that, like, I almost feel like jujitsu, like, brings this part of people out regardless of, of, like, what they do for a living. You know, like, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm an actor, you know, I, I work at a warehouse, I build houses. Like, jujitsu seems to, like, pull this, this commonality out of people, and, you know, when they're on the mat and they just connect in a different way. Um, yeah. You know, and it just, it's unique. And it's one of those things that, because man, I, I train a lot of different styles of martial arts, by a lot of different experiences, and I see it in a lot of different walks. But man, BJJ seems to just like connect a little bit deeper than the others. And I don't know if it's because you get to spar so often without taking as much damage, you know? Because it's like, hey, let's go box every day and spar, and you know, the damage your body just it's, you struggle keeping up with it. But with jujitsu, like you can go at it for a couple hours with everybody, you know, and then you can do it again the next day. You know, as we get older, maybe the day after, but, uh, sure. you know, I just, yeah, I, mean, I, just I, I think, I think, um, I think that, um, I mean, I, I'm, a lot of people do talk about it, but not only do I think it's the most effective martial art for actual combat, it's also the only martial art, like you said, that we can actually practice at a hundred percent or, you know, 80%, 90%. I mean, we're yeah. not trying to hurt each other, but, you know, uh, a lot of people ask me why, you know, why jujitsu? And one of the main reasons is, is like, we can actually practice this thing as if it were real. You know, we don't have to actually punch each other in the face to, to prove how good it works. We can get you in a really bad position and kind of slap you a little bit and go, this could be this, or this could be palm strikes that are really, really bad. But the point is, and again, this is something I learned as I get older, like, I love the fact that I can defend somebody, defend myself, defend my family, and I don't really have to hurt someone. I don't, I, I can just, you know what I mean? You know, and um, 
it's, uh, you know, watching all those old videos of, um, of uh, like those Gracie challenges. My favorite part, obviously my favorite part is watching jujitsu just shock everybody and blow everybody away. But I also really love when people, some, some of those dudes are slapping dudes around a little bit going, dude, I just, this is just a reminder yeah. that I could hurt you really bad if I wanted to. But that's how, that's how good of a martial artist I am. I'm just going to, and, and then now I'll show you. Okay, are you done? Okay, good. All right. You know what I mean? Like, you're out. Yeah, it's all like, okay, go home. You're finished. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, but, but overall, we can, we can practice it. We can really, really, really practice our, 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 our be, be on our shit. Like, yeah. like I said, almost 100% whenever we want to. Because that was always like the tough thing. Like, because I mean, I've always loved MMA. Like that's always been, you know, like competing MMA was always like, man, that's just what I fell in love with. But training higher level MMA was always a challenge because you got to have very specific partners that can play at that level, you know, because somebody's going to get hurt, whether it's you or them. But with jujitsu like that, I feel like that net's a little bit broader, you know, like you can train with more guys, more people, yeah. less experienced, you know, more experienced, um, you know, because like with the MMA, with the little gloves, like if we're doing little glove drills in the cage or something like that. It's like, hey, man, don't break my orbital bell. I'm like, my best friend that we've been training for like 20 years, one day he took me down against the wall, man, and I hit him like right on the eye socket. And like, I swore it just, I was like, oh, man, his orbital, like that's all jacked up. And, and I was just, I think about that moment all the time that, you know, something like that can happen, which, I mean, you're going to get bumps and bruises, you know, rolling, but it just seems like, like you said, you can yeah. play longer. You know? well, yeah two things one it's like the, the the first thing you learn is to tap so it's like when you know you you learn how to go okay all right let's keep going yeah. number one and, and also like that's why I, you know boxing to me is like man how many headaches am i gonna have how much brain damage are you gonna get like i don't yeah. you know i don't i don't i don't want to have uh floaters all the time you know like right. i don't want to be you know in that state of you know when you're younger you don't care and then when you get older you're like damn did i fuck my brain up a little bit yeah, you know I mean? yeah. oh man uh, i talked to john hackleman yesterday and that's exactly what he talked about was like when he quit fighting is he was like man he's like dude i, I got tired of the headaches and he's like i can't keep doing this with my body because he was starting to feel some of the just the miles you know yeah. and, and a lot of athletes you know, they're, they're being much more conscientious of that. And that's where you've seen like the progression of just martial arts training. Like, you know, people are getting smarter programming, specific training, high intensity. Cause you know, yeah. you see it like with football, like football a hundred years ago, man, it was, it was MMA of today. You know I mean? It was just hardcore. Everybody beats each other up. So you survives where now like the education has changed of, you know, how you train, who you train with, just like you were talking about earlier about, there's some partners that are a good match for you. You know, there's some guys you're like, I don't need to roll with you today, but I need to roll with these people today. And, you know, and I, and I feel like that's, 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 that's where I'm at now. Like, yeah, every, you know, I'd say, you know, once a week, I want to get down with those dudes that scare me a little bit that go a little yeah. too hard, but not every day. Yeah. On the, on the, you know, the, 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 if I'm training, you know, 20 times in a month, 15 of those times should be with people I dig and we're actually learning from each other. And, you know, we, 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 you know, appreciate our, 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 our injuries and stuff like that. And then five out of those 20 times should be with, you, you still got to dig in, man. You can't, yeah. you can't avoid that type of fighting, but you just can't do that type of fighting every single day, you know? Um, yeah, no, it's, you got to have the pressure test periodically just to keep you sharp. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. You no. Know. But I and think it should timing. be like 70, 30 or something like that. Yeah. You know? And it's like, well, the timing, you know, actually, so one, you remember the dog brothers, the stick fighters? Uh, I don't. So the, there's, so there's this group that's been around for like 30 years now. They're full contact stick fighters um, mm -hmm. came from the collie circles and like, and they do takedowns and everything. Cause he trained with Machado's and the Gracie's back in the nineties. But I, I was talking to him the other day cause he's a lot older now and he explained it really well. Cause he said, the timing and cadence of the pressure test should slow down over time. He said, when you're younger, the pressure test should be more often, you know, like it's like the harder, the training stage, all that. And as you get older, those slow down just because of mileage and keeping yourself healthy and longevity, but also the lessons learned were like the lessons you learned in the first 10 years doing jujitsu of those hard fights day after day after day, every single round, 
that's not necessarily where the gap in your learning is at this stage of the game, you know, where it's more about traps and setups or, or you know, something like that as jujitsu evolves. Right. You know, like, I, you know, that's something I look at is, you know, you're, you're not going to have to be out there fighting to the, to the death every single round for you to get better. It's getting no. a little bit specific because your comprehension is so much bigger, especially being a black belt. Like, you know, you understand the movements. It's now it's the details, you know. Um, yeah, it is the details. And it's also, and it's funny, man. It's like, it's like in a sentence, right? You like talk, you know, what's the, what's the first thing you think about when you think about Elio Gracie's style of fighting? To me, it's I'm going to outlast you and then I'm going to beat you. I can tell that to my 22-year-old self, and my 22-year-old self is going to still fight like a psychopath until I get the tap or until I get the win. But if you tell me that same sentence, you tell me that sentence, like, I, I, it doesn't make sense. Now it makes complete and total sense. I want to roll now for 45 minutes straight. I don't want to explode for four minutes and beat you in four minutes or try to outdo you in four minutes. I want to... When I'm training now, I'm thinking about, okay, what if he could hit me? Okay, I'm safe here. I'm safe here. I'm safe here. I'm safe here. You're getting tired. You're getting tired. Okay, now I'll easily do this and do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. The, um, I have one of my uh, one of my students, you know, was asking me. He's like, hey, you know, Caleb, like, so what happens, you know, as you train as a black belt? Like, what are you after during free rolls? And you know, he's like, you are you after submissions or sweeps? And I said, no. I said, I I'm after good movement. I was like, right. when, I can tr when I can roll and train with somebody for an hour and just get good movement, like that's my victory because of okay. those reps and that sensitivity of just feeling somebody's pressure and their balance. Like the more you can recreate those moments, mm -hmm. the better you're going to get. And whenever it's like an all out dog fight, those moments exist, but I think they're fewer and farther between, you know, because there's moments of like, I'm behind, I'm ahead. And I always try to kind of be in that in between for certain rounds where like I'm getting really good synergy of just sensing their balance, pressure and movement. And I feel like that's kind of what I'm after, you know, at this stage, a lot of times just to increase that sensitivity, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I might, yeah, that I, I dig that a hundred percent, but you think about if you're fighting a dude who doesn't know any jujitsu, all you really have to do is chill out, and wait for that opening, wait for that space, wait for whatever you're looking for, and it's a wrap. But if you, you can do that with high-level black belts, do you know what I'm saying? It's that same style of training, like, all right, I'm going to be as relaxed as I can. I'm not going to let you get any dominant positions. I'm going to not think of this as a six-minute fight. I'm going to eventually get you. So training like that, to me now, is the shit. That's how I look at training everything you said, but in that, I'm trying to figure out how to treat somebody on my level like I would treat somebody who doesn't know how to fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's always the goal, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and we have the ability to do that as long as we stay in that mindset of, I'm not gonna and freak out and explode and go nuts. I'm gonna, I, I know what I'm doing now. And that's yeah. something that you cannot teach. Time in jujitsu teaches you that period yeah. you can't be told like i said elio gracie can't if he came out to me when i was 22 and said this is the goal i'm still gonna fight like an idiot for 10 years that's yeah. what being a white belt and a blue belt and a purple belt ultimately is for you figure that out shit i'm still like you know i'm 20 years in and i still learn i don't learn new techniques i learn new ways of dealing with things and learn new ways of going like oh why do i and it's a lesson I got to learn all the time. Every time I'm rolling with some big spastic dude who's must more stronger than me, sometimes I'm in the right headspace, and I'm like, "This dude, I don't care what he does; it doesn't matter." And then sometimes I I go down to his level, and I'm going like this. You know what I mean? And it's like another lesson. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or you know, you we were talking when you text me asking me about like how you know how how I like to pass. You know, like that that shit changes. Like, I don't want to stuff my head down anymore. I got herniated discs. Like I got to be slicker and smarter than that. I, you know, it's like the greatest thing. Like how, how do you defend a triangle? It's like, I don't get into a triangle. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not allowing anybody to wrap their legs around my neck with my arm inside. It's just not happening. And yeah. when it does, it certainly ain't going to happen again anytime soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like uh 
it's basically a different approach to the same problems, which I think is what like makes jujitsu and training and a lot of martial arts styles transition to stuff outside of the gym so much because you know most of the training it's fundamentally the same problems you run into all the time but you just find different approaches uh you know different philosophical views of the problem you know sometimes different energy that you take to that problem like you said you know instead of spazzing out whenever you know the guy's trying to get you just relax you find a way around it so just changing the approach but very similar problems yeah absolutely man so um I do have to ask, when you were coming up as an athlete, doing BJJ, was there ever like, man, maybe I could fight MMA? Because like, I know the boxing thing kind of went the other way. Was there ever a time when you're like, man, I wonder if I get in the cage. Like, I wonder if that would be cool. No, no, no. Was there an interest? And, honestly, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not two sides. One, I'm not talking shit when I'm saying I feel like I could have actually competed. Yeah, I, no, I do trained. feel that. Way. Yeah. At the same time, I don't have what it takes up here to do what those dudes do. That is a special thing that anybody who takes that for granted is tripping. I told you that, like nervousness and that anxiety yeah. that I felt, even knowing that I was going to go into a boxing match with a dude that I could beat. Like it takes a special dude. I mean, look, I I, I competed in jujitsu and I had anxiety, but it's nothing like it's, it's nothing like. Um, going into a ring with someone uh, uh, in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. It takes a special thing. And, I, and again, I don't know what that is. And I don't know what freaked me out. And I don't know what it is. But anyway, I, I don't have that thing. I don't have that thing that's like, I'm yes. down to do combat for my life. I'm down yeah. to, I'm down to, because that's it. Like, you're fighting for your life. Like, on the street, I, I'm not down to have that thing in a professional. So yeah. anyway, no, the answer is fuck no. I do not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I just, you know, because, you know, after the boxing, you found jujitsu and sometimes, you know, that, that comes up. But um, so whenever you found jujitsu and, and your momentum started gaining, where was your turning point in which you started realizing, you know what, man, like this is, this is going to kind of help define who I am a little bit, you know, like this that's is going to become part of me. That's a good question. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you specifically when I was younger in my twenties, from 96 to 98, when I trained, it was all about proving something. It was all about being somebody who could never lose a fight. It was all about just being, uh, you know, having tools that would make me tougher than everybody else. Then when I came back to jujitsu in 2004, it was about exercise. It was about scrapping. It was about getting this thing out of me. Um, and then over time from 2004 till today, Jiu-jitsu has become, for me, my antidepressant. It has become, for me, the thing that gets me, um, it, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a depressed person, but I, without, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what's happening with me, when I go and do jiu-jitsu, I feel better. Um, and I know that sounds cliche and kind of corny, corny but it, no, no, it, no. It, ha it has literally, you know, it, you know, I've been with the same gal for like 10 years and it took her like five years to now know when she sees me in a certain state, she's like, yo, go train. Yeah. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's, I mean, not only do I, you know, try to use jujitsu in all, all parts of my life, but the actual, the actual training aspect has become the thing that keeps me um, I mean, I have no other way to put it. It's like the pill yeah. that I take that makes me normal. Well, jujitsu has become and without your that, without 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 that, you know that that primal thing that we all have. Even though I do it in a much more calm and relaxed way than I used to, it's still it's still it's still it's still tapping into a part of me that allows me to be a fucking human being. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I feel like without it, I, I'm, I'm 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 you know. Um, I'm, I'm going crazy. And also what it's also oddly enough taught me to do is it's slowly taught me how to be okay without it. If that makes any sense, like in these times when we can't train the thing itself that I can't live without is the thing that actually makes me be able to get through life without it. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. It does. You know, because like, so jujitsu has almost become your therapy, which, you know, it's become, you, I could have just done that. Do what? 
I said, I could have just said that. You, 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 I took a gigantic muddled bunch of bullshit and you said it in one word, therapy. There you go. Yeah, but man, that, but that's important though because that insight of how it affects you and how it affects most people like on a real emotional, you know, spiritual level almost is because like you said, man, there's something inside of you that has to get out. And, you know, that's what I feel like a lot of just martial arts training in general gives people is it gives them an outlet, but it also kind of gives them a temperance on, on life. Like I always tell people, my example is when you train hard, it seems to turn the volume down on everything else in your life. Straight up. That's it, man. That, that's it. I, you, you should just be my spokesperson because you just say everything. <laughs> yeah. all the mumbled bullshit. But yeah, well, but, man, I, don't care, I don't care what kind of day you're having. I don't care what girlfriend left you, what job you lost. You go and train for an hour and a half with a dude who's trying to break your arms and choke your neck. Even if he's your friend, he's still trying to break your arms and choke your neck. You leave that gym with a different perspective on life. You leave that gym going like, oh, maybe all that other bullshit doesn't mean anything because this thing that I just did is bigger than all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because it taps into like your, your core of what drives you as a human being, you know, like that's like yeah. part, it's part of how we're wired, you know, like that primal yeah. drive almost. Yeah. Now you brought up, so that I, I got to connect a couple dots that I think are very interesting. I, I talk in dots and dashes, man. I know. I'm oh like, man. It, it, but it's great though, because like, that's where the truth is it's between the moments. So you talked about, you got into skateboarding and surfing when you were younger. So I've talked to a couple other high level guys, like Chris Howder was one of them. He talked about surfing. Roy Dean talked about skiing. He My talked about, I trained with Chris Howder like six months ago. My neck still hurts, but go ahead. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, man. That guy's a beast. But he, he was kind of describing like, you know, when you're surfing and then like Roy Dean talked about whenever you're skiing, he's like, there's this moment where you just kind of hit the zone, you know, that moment where nothing else exists, which a lot of people find in jujitsu, you know, do you find that moment is what kind of is the therapy is like while you're rolling, like, it's the not measuring what's outside of the room. You know, it's not worried about. Yeah, of course, of, of, of course, a hundred percent, man. That moment. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily like put a finger on it like that, but of course, because if, um, if I tell you that, you know, this person that's very close to you just passed away and your girlfriend's leaving you and you've just lost your job and you're sitting at your desk and all that shit's going like this and you're like, oh my God, my life is over. And then at the same time I come in and go, hey, come on, and I tackle you. If you're still thinking about that shit, you're gonna lose. But if you can just focus on what you know and on your jujitsu, you'll be defending yourself and then maybe you'll be choking me. And that moment, there, you, you can't think about your bullshit while a dude, at your level and strength and technique level is trying to choke you. Because if you do, you lose. And then you, you tap and then you get again and then you get again and then you get again. And next thing you know, you're like, okay, I'm in the moment, fuck all that. And it doesn't just stay in that one moment. You go home with that. It's not like you only have that one moment to be released of all your bullshit. It does something to you. Up here and your body, you leave feeling different because you were able, you know that there's this thing that can take you away from whatever bullshit it, it, that you're dealing with. And I mean, look, man, that's high level fighting. That's high level sparring, actually. Yeah. Because if you get into a fight on the street, you might walk away and be like, did I have to do that? Like, did I have to punch that dude? Am I gonna get sued now? all that bullshit, none of that exists in the gym with jujitsu. It doesn't exist in a karate gym either where you're doing katas and you're, you're in theory showing how you would kick somebody in the face or how you would punch them. Like it doesn't exist there, it exists in one place in the jujitsu academy where we are fighting. We are fighting just like it's a real fight. The only thing is we're showing each other the respect to not break each other's noses or cut each other's eyes unless it's of course by accident. Um, and that not only is the moment of that therapeutic, but somehow it does something to you after you've left that is supremely, um, therapeutic, right? So if you were going to think about it, like for people that are always trying to be happy, you know, a lot of people are like, they're chasing the goal. Like I want the belt. I want to get recognition. I want the money. I want the job. 
you know, their eyes always in the future. And, you know, you probably have had enough experience that would you say that achieving the goal is probably not where happiness lives. It's probably like the journey to get there and the effort you sure. put forth and who you share with, right? Sure. So it kind of goes back to this, like, you know, fulfillment is finding a way to live in the moment because if you're too focused on the past, you know, you die a thousand deaths because you keep running it through. And when you're focused in the future too much, it's always about what might go wrong, what could happen and everything. So it's finding a way to be right here and now. And yeah, man, you're, be, yeah, you're, you're a Buddhist, bro. <laughs> but what I, you know, and I look at what you're saying is like, you know, the jujitsu training and, and everything is forcing you to be in the moment and to address what's right in front of you, which is almost alleviating all the pressure and the stress, you know, from dealing with all the stuff that's behind you and dealing with the stuff that might happen in front of you to where like, that's almost the escape, but you're escaping to the current moment, you know? Right. Yeah. Cause it's not an escape, right? It's actually, it's, 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 um, fuck man. I never really talked about jujitsu like this. <laughs> this is like, or, you know, um, it's, uh, it's the opposite of an escape. It feels like an escape and it has the effect of an escape, which is good, but it's, it's more, it's more right there, tangible and real than, than, than real life. Right. It's activation. Yeah, man. I mean, so think of it like muscle. Forget, forget spiritually. Just it's in our fucking DNA. I yeah. mean, if jujitsu is for you, then that means you're a certain type of person, and you probably would have been the same person who's out hunting a lion or hunting a bear to bring the yeah. shit home for your family. You're probably that same person. You probably have that same thing in you. Anybody who sticks with jujitsu for ten years plus. They are probably have that 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 warrior hunter gatherer DNA, and they probably would have been the person that like was like I'm the one in charge. You know what I'm saying? Like we yeah. That, that, well, I mean, that, so you're touching you're touching a part of your, you know, of of, of your whoever of your actual core uh, yeah. that 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 um, that you're not really allowed to fuck with in this world that we live in. You know what I mean? Well, it's like, and it's like. And, and people have a flawed perspective because if you go do something physical and you get really tired, you want rest. But mm -hmm. if you rest the body for a long period of time, it atrophies. Like right. we are not meant to escape. Like you said, it's not an escape. We're not meant to escape. We're meant to activate. Like the body does best when it is performing within like a specific zone. And, and that's where like the jujitsu training and making sure that that's in our life of the physical activity and the challenging part of it is so important because that is where we're supposed to operate not only physically that gets the best results out of us, but you know, emotionally and spiritually as well, because we're not supposed to escape. We're not supposed to avoid hard circumstances. And you talked about that in the very beginning. And I think it's unique that it came back to that because you talked about if you don't want to go try the hardest, you're not going to get anything worth having. You know, if you're not the one that's going to kill yourself to succeed, you're never going to be there. Anybody you admire had to put in that work. And when you look at what that work was, it was being activated. Like you, you have to go do it. And, and, you know, that's kind of what's interesting is like we are not designed to avoid resistance and obstacles. No, no. But, we, but unfortunately, a lot of people are taught that in our yeah. like in our world you know and it's it's um jujitsu is the opposite of that shit you know yeah it, it's like you don't want an avoidance principle you want a coping mechanism to where it's right. like i just i find a way to address whatever like here's an example like i've used with people is it's like when you're driving down the road in a car and if i cover the windshield and i only give you one little hole to look through that is very stressful it's dangerous you crash into stuff you know you can only go kind of one direction in your goal in life and especially training and expanding as an individual is you got to peel the layers off that windshield because the traffic and the obstacles like that never goes away. You just get the ability to have a broader perspective to navigate it a little bit more effectively. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what happens with the belt ranks in jujitsu is like the white belt can only see through the little hole and the black belt has the perspective where it's the same stuff. He can just address it a little bit earlier and it smooths right. out finds a rhythm, sees the exit over on the side where he can go around. Like, right. like that's, that's the true skill that a lot of people are, are learning and absorbing through this journey of martial arts, you know, because when you think about it, there's a lot of people that are physically very successful. Like their bodies are in shape, you know, they got muscles, they're, you know, they're attractive and people value their physicality that emotionally 
are broken and crippled and just, man, they just hate themselves. And then you've got the, you know, vice versa, people that are so like emotionally high on life and they don't have this physical attribute part of it. And it's like, I think that's where almost some of the uniqueness comes into where whenever your body and, and mind kind of intersect a little bit to where like your productivity in your life is a combination of those two, like, like that's where people find true momentum, you know, but I got a little bit on a tangent. So no, no, man, listen, I'm, I, I, uh, I appreciate you talking instead of me because I. Oh no way, man! People don't want to hear. They want to hear. I babble like a motherfucker. Oh um, man! So I do. Lastly, I am just curious. Um, being in jujitsu, the martial arts lifestyle, what do you feel like that has given you within your career? You know, because I don't want to minimize that. Because I mean, we're all about jujitsu, but you know, you're very successful. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, talking about my career, I, I'm way when you know I get asked to talk about my career a lot and I say no but talking about jujitsu is something I don't get to do often so that's like that's why I was like yeah of course like this is exciting yeah. to me um and so and I'm just I, curious like what what um what has crossed over that has helped you know from your martial arts you know lifestyle and what you've learned from it you know what has influenced your career and not, not just your career man it's your life your family man like what's bled over in a positive way <clears throat> um, I mean, I don't know, man. I, again, I like, I don't want to sound like sanctimonious about it and corny about it, but, um, you know, I mean, everything we've talked about, uh, like pertaining to jujitsu, jujitsu specifically, you know, all those, the, 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 the idea of, staying calm and relaxed and waiting for someone else to make a mistake so that you can move forward. And I don't mean that in like a, a, a conniving way in business or in life, but the idea of I've been in really bad positions in jujitsu and physically, and I know how to get out of them. And the idea of jujitsu as a problem solving martial art. I mean, what the fuck better metaphor for life is there, right? Like I can, if, if I can figure out how to defend myself against a dude who's physically stronger than me and bigger than me and more insane than me, like I'm going to have problems dealing with some executive at a studio who's making a movie. Like that's eat. That's, you know what I'm saying? That ain't, that's, that's, you can, it, it just, you know, jujitsu is one of the hardest things in the world to get good at. So just that logically, I mean, take, take the, take all the beauty out of it, just that as an idea alone. If you can, you know, if you can do this, that it's really, really hard, how hard is this really, you know? And I think, again, I think jujitsu is one of the hardest things in the world to, that someone, like an endeavor to, to, to try to stick with for the rest of your life. And if you can stick with jujitsu from day one to the rest of your life, there's not a lot of other shit that you can't do, I think, you know? Um, and it's also like, you know, jujitsu isn't for, for, I hate to like blanket statement, the word stupid or dumb, but like, you can't be dumb and be good at jujitsu. It's impossible. Yeah. You know, you have to be somewhat intelligent to, to, to not just to be good at it in the beginning, but to stick with jujitsu for 50 years, you have to be intelligent. You have to be intelligent. You know, you have to, you learn about your body, you, are, you learn about your weaknesses, you learn about your strengths, you learn about what food you eat that makes you feel bad and what food you eat that doesn't make you feel bad. That if you weren't training jujitsu, you otherwise wouldn't pay attention to. You know what other activities in life aren't so good for your body because of what you've learned about your body in jujitsu. You know, you, it's, it's, it's sort of like a, like a, a, a pretty loaded question because it's never ending. Like I, I think all of it translates to life and all of it, especially if you're a physical person, especially if you're someone who wants to succeed and somebody who wants to fight hard and be the best at anything you do, there is no better, um, there is no better um, base than jujitsu for that mindset. Right. That was awesome, man. I appreciate you taking time to talk to me. Um, yep. It's kind of a, you know, a weird, crazy time. And, you know, I think people are going to really 
you know, value your input because of uh, the experience you have with jujitsu. Um, and I just, I really do appreciate it. Is there anything you'd like to finish with? Just saying like for, you know, the people do, a lot of people are tripping out right now. Like what's going to happen to our sport? What's going to happen to our martial art? What's going to happen? When are we going to be able to train again? When are we, blah, 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 blah. First of all, we all get injuries. We all get injuries. If you haven't spent three months off the mat, then you haven't really done jujitsu yet anyway. So like this ain't shit. We will all get through this. Um, this is something that, um, that uh, it's a good practice to figure out how you can stay in jujitsu without actually sparring every single day, without actually rolling every single day. And even if that means somehow trying to put it out of your head and have figure out a way to have jujitsu be a part of your life without it actually being physically a part of your life. Like that's what this exercise is about. And this ain't forever. It's just for right this moment. And it seems like it's taken too long, but however long it's meant to take is however it's again, it's like whatever this moment does to you and does to your jujitsu will define you and your jujitsu down the line. Don't let it fuck up your jujitsu. Don't let, if you're a white belt and you just got your blue belt and you're like, or you're just about to get your blue belt and you're like, fuck, when did this come? Blah, blah, blah. This is good for you. This is good for you. Breaks from the actual physical aspect of it can be healthy. So don't let it be something negative. Turn it into something healthy. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a great lesson of what jujitsu can do uh, in life in general. Figure out ways to make things turn negative shit into positive shit, you know? And this time is, is shitty for all of us. Cause I mean, dude, just talking to you for 45 minutes, all I want to do right now is go train, right? But I can't. And instead I'm going to go do some push ups and some pull ups. And maybe I'll watch a jujitsu video. Maybe I won't watch a jujitsu video because maybe that'll make me want to train even more. I got to figure out how to get through this, this, this time without, um, you know, you know, uh, one time I was, sorry. One time I was talking to Heat on Gracie and, and I, had a, I had an injury and I was like, I'm losing my fucking mind. And he's like, why? And I said, because dude, I can't train. He's like, oh dude, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get better at that. And that's all he, he said. And I thought about it for two weeks and three weeks and four weeks. I was like, what the fuck? And then finally I understood what he meant. He's like, we, you know, th this shit's gonna happen. And you gotta be okay with not training. You have to be okay with not training. It's gotta be okay. Because not to mention, you're also going to you go train when you shouldn't be training. You might be putting people in danger right now. And that ain't the right thing to do. Yeah. It's, part, it's part of the trip, man. If you're, if you, and again, sorry, I'm babbling. But if your goal is to train jujitsu until you're 90 years old, what's a couple of months? If your goal is to train jujitsu for the next three years, a couple months is a big deal. If your goal is just to get your purple belt and then quit, then yeah, go ahead. Go crazy right now. But if you're about jujitsu and your goal is to be with it forever for the rest of your life, which is a long time, then man, what, what's the year? Seriously, what's a year? You know, shit, man, I got to be honest. Like my body actually feels pretty good right now. I haven't trained in five weeks. I'm not all banged up. I actually feel like, I'm like, wow, my back doesn't hurt. My neck doesn't hurt, you know, yeah. take, take advantage of it. You know, it's a positive thing, not a negative thing. Absolutely, man. And I think that sound that that rings true with the perspective you've given us, you know, for the last hour. And, um, you know, that's a really healthy viewpoint that I think people can appreciate. And I just wanted to say thanks, man. And I really enjoyed it. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I can talk about jujitsu all day. I feel like we didn't even we, we, I could feel like we didn't even tap into it. We could go on, go on, go on and go on. Come back to me if you need another hour. Absolutely. All right, brother. Thank you.